this series of videos I'm designing and building a Z80 based computer system. I'm doing it the hard way using discrete logic devices for uh, pretty much all of the system. So the video output uh, circuits are going to be discrete logic. I've already showed the design for that and uh, we'll be going into more detail with it in future videos. Um, but currently I'm working on the uh, Z80 core of the system. So this part of the system is the Z80 itself and the basic mapping and peripheral control circuits that it requires in order to function. Um, that includes uh, things such as the DRAM control, so I'm using a DRAM memory system as well as a small SRAM for the video memory but the main RAM will be DRAM and uh, that's what I've been working on here. You can see it's a bit of a tangled mess at the moment but uh, uh, we'll go through this video, I'll show you how far I've got with this and then what the plan is for the future development. So what we're looking at at the moment is on the scope we've got the signals going to the DRAMs, that's coming out of the DRAM control circuits. And the um, there is a ROM here, you can't see it, it's sort of tucked down behind all these wires, but the code that's running in it is very simple, it's just uh, writing uh, incremental values to a block of the DRAM memory and then it's reading them back to make sure they're all correct so that's just a test that the uh, memory control and uh, refresh etc is working and just to prove that it is actually writing to the DRAM which is down here on this small board oh, I made this board up just so I wouldn't have sort of hundreds and hundreds of extra jumpers going everywhere if I disconnect one of the data lines from this, uh, you should see that everything on the scope will stop apart from the refresh cycle. So I'll pull the wire out and as you can see the control lines going to the DRAM have all stopped. The yellow trace is the refresh, it's not triggering, the scope's not triggering on that which is why it's um, not stable on the screen. Um, but you can see it's still active we'll reset the processor so it should restart the program and you can see it's once again successfully uh, writing to the DRAM if it detects an error it will branch off to a different address as it did just now and will uh, stop the read and write cycles I slow down the time base on the scope you can see they're repeating at regular intervals and the reason we're getting the pulses in between the reads and writes is they are of course the refresh cycles and one of those occurs uh, during each M1 cycle of the Z80 processor cycle and so uh, there's a few of those in between each of the loops in the code. So the timing for the DRAM is now all sorted out that's working fine but in the previous video I was using this circuit to control the DRAM. So this contains the DRAM control circuits to generate the required RAS and CAS timing uh, as well as the uh, basic memory decoding. So if you recall I was simply splitting the memory space into two and uh, the upper half was the DRAM and the lower half was the ROM space. But in our final design uh, I want to use this memory map, so it's a fairly simple memory map. Um, two banks, if uh, you recall right at the beginning I said I'd uh, like this system to be able to run something like CPM and so for that to work we need to have access to RAM right down to address zero and the only way we can do that, in fact not the only way, but one way we can do that is to have two banks uh, of RAM mapping and in the bottom of the second bank uh, we'll have our ROM followed by our mapped in-out. That's not to be confused with the in-out using the in-out um, instructions for the processor. This is memory mapped in-out. I'll come back to this in a future video. Uh, and also I want some common RAM. So again something like a CPM or really anything where we have to run code in uh, bank 1 which is most of the time. If we were to try and uh, have all of our, our code in the ROM and then we switch over to bank 1 without there being any code there 
uh, the system would hang because there's no code to run. So what we will be doing is creating a boot up ROM that will copy some uh, critical code, sort of BIOS really, up into the common RAM area. And then when we switch banks, it will of course be able to run from the common RAM because that's effectively mapped into both uh, banks. And then we'll have access to the rest of the RAM space. The top 2K is again common RAM, but that's the uh, video SRAM. So that's the small um, SRAM chip that we saw in the video control. And again, we'll look at that more closely in a future video. Uh, but again, that's mapped to both banks, so we don't have to worry about switching banks when we want to write to the video RAM. We do, of course, lose 2K of the main RAM, but if that's a con uh, concern for you, you could just um, uh, increase the number of banks you're using. So this is our memory map, but we want to be able to um, create this as simply as possible and have the uh, Z80 CPU see the memory in this form. So that's what I've done since the previous video. We now have the design for this. So I've replaced the circuit we were using, added the memory um, mapping. So this is now the full memory mapping circuit. This is creating the memory map that I just showed. So it's creating this. It also includes the bank switching circuit. So the bank switching will work through one of the in-out ports from the Z80. And I have changed the, the test program that we're using. So instead of having the simple test program of just reading and writing the data, you can see that's still going on. But what I've done is at the beginning of each block, um, the first few instructions set the uh, bank to bank zero and then later on we set to bank one and then we go back and swap back again so uh, of course i can't actually have it switching at the moment because if it switches to bank one at the moment there'll be no code uh, sorry if it switches to bank zero there'll be no code in that bank and the system will then just crash it'll be trying to execute whatever garbage happened to be in ram when we powered up the uh, system uh, so um, we do have the bank switching circuits uh, on the board but this jumper is the input to the bank switching part of the circuit and the bank switching is over here so they're not connected together however if we change the scope trigger I do have one of the inputs to the scope set to the bank switching so the green trace at the bottom is the bank switching output so that's the output from the bank switching circuit if I change the time base you'll see that it's cycling um, at the end and beginning of each of the main uh, passes through the test code so that's uh, working and this is as I say by virtue of a write to the in out port that I've mapped the bank switching circuit to So we'll just take a quick look at the circuits. I won't go into too much detail in this video. And if you want a lot of detail, as I've said before, I am going to be releasing a book about this entire process and all the design circuits, schematics, everything, uh, once this project's complete. Um, but just uh, a quick um, look at the circuits that we're using for this. So this is the memory mapping and bank switching. Um, quite a simple circuit. Uh, as I've said before, what I tend to prefer, prefer to do is I'll develop a circuit and then as much as possible I'll simplify it. I haven't gone quite as far with, with this as I could do because I want the explanations to make some sense and I'll come back to this in a later video uh, and explain in more detail how these circuits uh, function. But it's probably fairly evident anyway. We have um, decoding up here for the uh, video RAM decoding down here for the in out and the ROM and then there is some bank switching um, that allows us to determine uh, which particular bank we are uh, enabling and then of course we have the override uh, for the common RAM and the video RAM areas. We've then got the bank switching circuit itself so this is um, 
it's kind of combined. I've combined this with the in-out uh, control. So there will be some in-out, and as I said before, this will be the instruction in-out uh, control as opposed to the memory mapped in-out. Um, if you're not familiar with that, I'll explain the difference in a future video. Um, but it's a fairly simple circuit and uh, this allows us to switch banks under CPU control by writing uh, a 1 or a naught on data bit CPU data bus bit naught and then we um, send that out to port in this case port 0. Uh, we've then got the um, memory control itself. This is the memory strobe control. It also contains the in-out strobe control as well. So the circuit I've just shown actually uses the in-out write for this. And um, this produces a low level output whenever we're trying to write to the memory. And that is in turn used to uh, control access to the a particular memory device we are trying to address. The section at the bottom is of course for the DRAM control. So as you can see it's working, the memory mapping is working. I did of course have to make a change to the address we're writing to. So in the test code we were writing to address 4000H but that falls within the in-out space, the in-out memory map space. So I had to change that so we're actually writing to the common uh, DRAM. I've got to use the common DRAM here because this is all at the moment in bank 1. If I try switching to bank 0, as I said, the system will crash because it won't then be able to access the ROM. Um, but this is now all working. All the strobe lines are doing what they're supposed to. They're all working the way they should. So the next step with regard to this, because I've gone really as far as I can on breadboards with one single assembly, it starts getting a bit unreliable beyond this. And I've had to be fairly careful how I route the ground jumpers on this, otherwise I was getting um, erratic uh, behavior. And especially because I have the logic analyzer connected, that makes things uh, even worse. So. I've gone as far as I can with this on breadboards. The next step is going to be to turn this particular assembly into a, a PCB prototype. So that will give me yet another daughter board. But I will build onto it the DRAM because we know that's now working. So there's no point retaining the uh, additional board for the DRAM. So everything here I can put onto a single PCB. I uh, will of course have uh, inputs and outputs for that to allow us to connect it to our other circuits. So I'll get that designed and uh, get those on order. Um, and in the meantime, what we'll look at in the next video is if you recall when we were looking at the video system, um, I said I was going to make a small board and then we could look at that video system in more detail. Uh, the boards were delivered and I've started to assemble one so in the next video while we're waiting for the boards for the CPU section to arrive and for me to put one together uh, we'll go back turn our attention back to the video system and uh, we'll start putting the chips into this board see if it actually works and then I can explain its function in a bit more detail and then by the time we've done that we'll hopefully have the boards for the CPU available we can then try connecting the two together because once we've done this of course we should be able to write data into the video RAM and once we can do that our test programs can become a bit more uh, adventurous and we can start hopefully writing data into the video RAM and once we do that we can start expanding the design and adding the required peripheral devices. So making progress, it is uh, also a complex um, project but it should be quite interesting by the time it's done and um, it will be along the lines of the type of design you would have seen when the Z80 first became available because we're doing this in a very similar sort of way. Uh, albeit the circuits might be a different design, I'm just kind of 
designing these as I'm going along so they won't be the same as a vintage machine has used but they'll be the same sort of idea these circuits all tended to uh, go along the same sorts of lines and I'm sure this will be no exception but we will end up with a, um, a fully functional Z80 system with some fairly nice features such as the, the DRAM and, uh, and the uh, discrete video out and it should uh, be quite an interesting project and we'll be able to continue with its development um, as it progresses and as we get uh, each of these assemblies turned into a board we'll be able to expand on that and the new features that we want and hopefully end up with a, a fairly um, sophisticated machine by the time we've finished.